Hello and welcome to Teachings in Education, Supervisor of Science, interview question number one. And here is a question that is frequently asked. What do you look for in evaluating science-specific lesson plans from your teachers? Now, there are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a couple of responses. The first thing you want to look for is clear and measurable lesson objectives. Student objectives should be aligned to standards and measurable in terms of student success. Secondly, I would look for increasing levels of cognitive rigor. For student success, teachers must plan for activities and assessments with higher order thinking skills. Third on the list, look for specific learning activities. The success is in the details. Great teachers plan for specific activities and provide step-by-step -step details. Next up, look for alignment of curriculum and standards. So match the lesson plan standards to its corresponding map in the curriculum. And lastly, look for the necessary components. Lesson plans should have accommodations, modifications, activities, objectives, standards, differenti differentiated instruction, student grouping, and much, much more. Here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Study, 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 and study even more. Um, if you can, bring a small note card around with you and use that to study for the interview. Interview question number two. How would you effectively mediate an ongoing conflict between a parent and a teacher? There are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. The first thing to do is have a conference. Get both the teacher and the parent into the room with you at the same time, but not until both of them are calm and ready to talk. Next up, you want to identify the core problem. Don't be surprised if the problem was something very trivial, such as parent not liking a teacher's tone during an email exchange. It can be anything. After you identify the problem, you then want to brainstorm solutions. When brainstorming solutions, it's important to, that it's a collaborative process and no judgment is passed on at any time. Fourth on the list, find solutions that work for both parties. When finding a solution, be sure to keep the students as the focal point. And lastly, always intervene when somebody crosses the line or gets malicious. Be proactive in making sure everyone is polite so tell both the teacher and parent beforehand that no insulting or profanity will be accepted. And here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Dress your best, dress for success. And always dress in clothes that make you feel confident about yourself. Interview question number three. What steps would you take to prepare students for college and upper level science courses? Now, there are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. First off, plan challenging course schedules, including AP and honors courses. Be sure the right students get these opportunities, but be cautious not to put too much demand on students. Second, increase the time of instruction. You want to increase time of instruction on both the classroom level and student schedule. Those extra hours can make a difference in college. Third on the list, collaborate with guidance. You would like to see teachers have productive discussions with guidance counselors about creating paths that will prepare students for college. Next up, provide learning skills classes. Learning skills and test taking strategies will first help students get into college and second, teach them lifelong learning strategies. And lastly, Track failing students for intervention strategies. Schools do whatever they can to prevent student failure. Therefore, track student achievement in an effort to intervene when students are failing behind. And here is a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Take a deep breath before the interview. Remember, you do not want to appear nervous. Deep breaths will calm your nerves.
Interview question number four. As department supervisor, how do you handle a student that frequently disrupts learning? Now, there are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. First off, talk to the student's teachers. When speaking with the teachers, you get a clear idea of what some of the actual problems are with the student. Second, administrators should support and empower teachers. Allow teachers to discipline students and show teachers that you support them. Third up, provide increasing disciplinary actions to the student. You may begin with a stern talking, but that fades quickly. You must move on up the ladder from detentions to suspensions, bringing the parents in and so forth. Next up, look into behavior intervention and support system. When discipline doesn't work, you should look into positive supports and interventions. Schools often employ behaviorists specifically for this purpose. And last but not least, wraparound services. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and wraparound services is just that. Reach out to anyone and everyone willing to help this child. And here's a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Do your research on the school. Always have a little bit of background knowledge on the school that you are applying to. Interview question number five. What does rigorous instruction look like and what teaching strategies should be used? There are many acceptable answers to this question, but here are just a few possible responses. First off, identify critical content. Some standards are tested more than others and therefore more important to the curriculum, so teachers must focus on those standards. Second, have students engage with the content. A lecture-driven teacher-centered classroom is out of date. Learning should be student-centered and allow for students to learn the content in different ways. Third, tiered questioning techniques for instruction and assessment. Begin by questioning students through simple knowledge and build up to higher order cognitive rigor questions. Number four, review and revise previous knowledge. Over time, students forget things that they have learned. However, students need to continually brush up on what they have learned, and standardized tests are cumulative. Uh, last on the list, increase practice with student-centered learning. Class time is centered on students working. And here's a quick tip to take with you to the interview. Have a strong and firm handshake. Actually practice the handshake with a close friend or relative. So right now I would like to say please subscribe to this channel as more questions will be added. Also I will post a link in the description below with more questions in a document sometime soon. Thank you very much.